everyone. Just how slow does a snail go? Are bugs afraid of the dark? Why do ants march in a line? I hope you are all enjoying the sunshine and because it's such lovely weather at the moment maybe you could do a bug hunt outside your house in your garden or around your house. I know in my garden there are lots of little nimbles crawling and scampering around at the moment that I could spot. Now if you were wondering what questions was Abby asking, today our book is a non-fiction book. That means it's an information book, so it's true facts, it's not a story. And Mummies and Duffies, it's quite a long book, so what you might want to do is save this video and come back to it when you want to learn about a new, bu new bug or a new insect. So I will put the times of what different insects appear at in the description in the video so you can come back and find the insect that you're most interested in. The book that I'm going to read is called The Big Book of Bugs and it's by an artist and, and writer called Yuval Zoma. Yuval Zoma does some really beautiful insect illustrations so after this video I will maybe demonstrate how to do some beautiful insect illustrations just like Yuval Zoma. The Big Book of Bugs Now because this is a non-fiction book it's got a contents page It says who's inside So it tells you what is on each page of the book And the numbered page that it's at So if I wanted to find out about ants Ants Then I could have a look on page oh, 20 and then I could find some information about ants and you can see on this on this page we've got the titles at the top and this is a feature of non-fiction books they're called subtitles so they're like mini titles on the page the main title is on the front of the book the subtitles appear at the top of the page. It gives you information about what the pages are going to be about. This is, says, all kinds of bugs. Who's inside this book? Plenty of flying, stinging, wiggling bugs. Meet insects from buzzing bees to scuttling beetles. And all kinds of creepy crawlies, such as snails, spiders, centipedes and worms. What do they have in common? They don't have bones inside their body. Most bugs have a skeleton on the outside called an exoskeleton. So if you think of beetles or maybe a snail, you know that they don't have anything, they don't have a skeleton inside, but they have hard shells to protect them. When is a bug not a bug? Many people call all insects bugs, but to a scientist, a bug is a particular kind of insect with sharp mouth parts to stab and suck up food. Animals without backbones are called invertebrates. Insects are the biggest group of invertebrates. Bug spotters. What does a bug think of you? You are a giant to a teeny bug. In a bug's world, a flower is as tall as a tree and rock is as high as a mountain. Let's go bug spotting. Bugs hide in dark places. They live under damp logs and stones and in dark flower pots. Always be kind to bugs. Bugs don't like being picked up, but they don't mind being watched. Please look, but don't touch. Bug spotters kit. Take photos of the bugs you see or draw their pictures. Write down the bugs you see where to. Ouch! Many bugs bite or sting to say, go away. If you scare a bug, it might hurt you. Bugs love flowers. Wait by spring blossom or summer flowers to see bees and butterflies. And there's a bug book that they've created. Bug family tree. Are all bugs the same? Not at all. Bugs come in different types. 
or families. Here's how to tell who is who. Insects have a body in three parts, six legs, two, four or no wings and feelers. Snails and slugs have one squishy foot for sliding along, feelers, a shell that keeps the snail safe. The scientific name for, for snails is gastropods. Mm. Can you find two stick insects? Here's a clue, they look like thin twigs. Spiders have eight legs, no wings, a body in two parts. The scientific name for spiders is arachnids. Centipedes and millipedes have lots of legs, a body made of a head plus many rings or segments, feelers, and the scientific name is myriapods. Worms have no legs, a long bendy body, a mouth at one end. The scientific name is annelids. Beetles. How does a beetle beetle along? A beetle scuttles on six legs. It has a hard shell like a suit of armour to keep its wings safe. Big beetle family. There are thousands of different kinds of beetle. They live in trees, water, sand, ice and even in your home. Don't eat me. Some beetles spray poison to say, leave me alone. Can you find two dung beetles rolling poo into big balls ready to eat? A baby beetle is wiggly. It hatches from an egg and is called a larva. Birds. How many spots are on a ladybird? It depends because there are many different types. A ladybird is a beetle and it comes in all different kinds of colours, sizes and patterns. Some don't even have spots at all. Gardeners love ladybirds. Ladybirds eat small green bugs called aphids. Aphids eat plants so a ladybird is a gardener's best friend. Ladybirds in space. Ladybirds have been taken up in a rocket to help with scientific research. Warning, I'm poisonous. A ladybird's bright wings are a warning. They say, I taste nasty. A ladybird sleeps all winter. It finds a dark place to hibernate with a group of other ladybirds. And there's the ladybird gone to space. Butterflies. Butterflies. How does a butterfly flutter by? It flaps its beautiful wings and flies from flower to flower. It drinks a sweet juice called nectar. A butterfly has feelers to smell. It sucks up nectar through a long tube on its head. A butterfly helps seeds to grow. It spreads golden dust called pollen from flower to flower. Here is a butterfly life cycle. A butterfly changes. It starts as a tiny egg. A wriggly caterpillar hatches out and grows from, from, from munching on leaves. So that's stage one. And it moves down to stage two. The caterpillar makes a shell called chrysalis. Inside it starts to change. Stage three, the shell splits open. The wriggling caterpillar has turned into a fluttering butterfly. And then it lays an egg and goes all the way back to the beginning. Moths. What does a moth do all day? It hides. It's difficult to spot a moth against tree bark, leaves and even bird plume. 
At night, a moth flies around looking for sweet juices, such as flower nectar to eat. That's something butterflies and moths have in common, isn't it? A moth's wings are dusty. Tiny hairs on its wings look and feel like dust. Never touch a moth or a butterfly's wings. They might break. Good at hiding. There are 29 moths, 29 moths in this picture. Can you find them all? Give you a chance to have a look. Some moths have pretend eyes. The big spots on an owl moth's wing look like eyes and scare enemies. Ants. Why do ants march in a line? Because each ant follows the one in front. Thousands of ants share a nest. They work to keep the nest clean and safe and to bring back food. An ant talks with its feelers. An ant taps its long feelers on other ants to pass on a message. Ants follow smelly trails left by other ants to find food to take back to its nest. The queen lays many eggs. She is the mother of all the ants in the nest. Most ants live for 90 days, but the queen can live for 15 years. And there's the queen right down at the bottom. You can see how busy the ant nest is. Bees. Why do bees buzz buzz buzz? When a bee flaps its wings, it makes a buzzing noise. Honey bees buzz from flower to flower, helping more flowers to grow. Honey bees live in a hive. Only the queen lays eggs. Worker bees do everything for their queen. They bring her food and help build, clean and guard the hive. How do bees make honey? A honeybee sucks up sweet nectar from a flower with its long tongue. Then, inside the hive, the bees turn the nectar into runny honey, ready for the beekeeper to collect. Dancing bees. Look back at the hive. Bees do a waggle dance to tell each other where to find fresh flowers. Centipedes. Does a centipede really have a hundred legs? Not always. Most centipedes have about 30 legs. But some have more than 300. A centipede marches along quickly on its legs. Up, two, three, four. A centipede has a bendy body. It has one pair of legs on each segment or part of its body. Home is dark and damp. A centipede lives under leaves and logs. It needs to keep its body damp. How big is a giant centipede? As big as a dinner plate. A tropical giant centipede eats frogs, birds and even bats. Centipedes are very old. They lived on Earth long before the dinosaurs appeared. Crickets and grasshoppers. Why do they chirp in the grass? To find a partner. A male cricket or grasshopper chirps to get the attention of a female. Crickets and grasshoppers also chirp to say, look out, danger. How do they make music? A grasshopper rubs its back legs on its wings to chirp. A cricket rubs its wings together. They are good jumpers. A cricket and a grasshopper both have long back legs for jumping high. They are bad flyers. Crickets and grasshoppers have two pairs of wings, but most aren't good at flying. 
and some can't fly at all. Snails. Just how slow does a snail go? Super slow. It would take a snail about one day to slither to the end of a long garden. A snail can see and sniff. A snail has four bendy feelers. Two long feelers have eyes on the tips. Two shorter feelers sniff things out to eat. A shell is a safe home, but watch out, a bird might smash the shell and eat the snail inside. Snails live in wet places. They have leave a slimy trail which keeps which helps them to glide along. Can you think of any other mini beasts that leave a slimy trail? A snail lays eggs. Baby snails hatch out. As a snail grows, its shell grows too. Earthworms. Why do earthworms wriggle? They have they don't have legs, so they stretch and slither to move along. They grip the ground with tiny hairs all over their bodies. Good for the garden. An earthworm digs tunnels and lets air into the soil. This helps plants to grow. An earthworm can't see or hear. It feels tiny movements in the soil that warn danger a hungry bird is nearby. An earthworm needs plenty of water. An earthworm can die if their skin dries out. It makes a sticky slime to keep its skin damp. Dead plants for dinner. An earthworm eats rotting stuff, sand, soil and tiny pebbles. Spiders. How many legs does a spider have? A spider has eight hairy legs and 48 knees. Some spiders have long legs, others have short fat legs. There are many different kinds of spider. A spider is really hairy. It uses its hairs to taste, hear and touch. The hairs pick up tiny movements. A spider has eight eyes. But it can't see things well if they are far away. A spider pulls silk out of its body. It spins a web with long, strong strands of silk and catches flying bugs for dinner. Can you find a trapdoor spider that builds a trap to catch dinner? Look, can you spot the trapdoor spider? I think he's down here. Baby bugs. Does a baby bug look like its parents? A baby snail looks like a tiny snail, but a baby beetle starts off as a squirmy grub called a larva. Look at the changes it goes through to become a beetle. Most bugs hatch from eggs. How many eggs can you count in this picture? Which bugs do they belong to? Most 
Most bugs don't look after their eggs, but a female spider does. She gently carries a sack of eggs in her jaws. Can you find the old crumpled skin of a centipede? As a centipede grows, it sheds its old skin and a new one grows. A dung beetle lays its eggs in poo to make sure that its babies had food when they hatch. And I'm going to stop the book there. There's a couple of bugs that I skipped just for time. So I really would, if you would like, recommend this book because it's a great book with lots and lots of lovely insects in it. That is everything for today. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day in the sun and I will see you all very soon. Okay, see you. Bye.